Hi, welcome to the YouTube channel Witness for Jesus. I want to talk to you today about study article 36, which is being studied this week. Uh, first week in November 2022, and it's called Jehovah's People Love Righteousness. The reason I'm talking to you about this article is because there's some things that jumped out at me straight away as being completely unscriptural and completely um, easily shown from scripture that they don't grasp the teaching from the scriptures about righteousness. What do I mean? Well, you'll notice that first of all, they go straight to the Old Testament with Joseph um, and speaking about things that happened in the Old Testament. Jehovah's Witnesses are doing this a lot. They do it all the time. And it's always, uh, as far as I'm concerned, an indication that they ignore Jesus and what Jesus accomplished. Um, I do have a video on that, actually, which I'd like to link you to. I did an entire video which talked about what Jesus did accomplish for us. And it went into eight things that Jehovah's Witnesses don't even acknowledge, that Jehovah's Witnesses don't even teach from Scripture that Jesus did. But this article is about righteousness and Christians have a teaching about righteousness that um, Jehovah's Witnesses clearly do not grasp. And I'm going to show you this in this article. It's a really important thing for your beliefs, for um, your relationship with God. It's really, really uh, paramount. So let's get into that. So the Watchtower article in paragraph four starts with what is righteousness and unsurprisingly um, we see that it starts with Ecclesiastes and mentions Luke about people being self-righteous but in paragraph five it says that righteousness means doing what is right in the eyes of Jehovah God. There we can see that. And the words for righteousness convey the idea of living by the highest standards, Jehovah's standards. The entire article completely ignores the actual definition of righteousness in the New Testament that all Christians understand. So this article is saying that your righteousness is your works you're living by the highest standards, doing what is right. The entire article talks in this manner about righteousness and it talks about all the decisions you make. And it basically uh, always talks about um, right and wrong. And there's something important in paragraph six I'm going to cover, but bef but first I'm going to prove to you what righteousness is in the New Testament. Uh, I've got a little article here. Um, it's just, what is justification? The word justification is another word for righteousness. And it is declaring a person to be just or righteous and is a legal term signifying acquittal. So for Christians, when we are declared righteous, it is that we are acquitted completely of the accusations against us. We are acquitted from our sin entirely because of Jesus Christ. Let's have a look at the scripture. Romans chapter 4 describes this. Um, it talks about Abraham and it says in verse 2, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. And continuing there, verse 4, now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And verse 5, and to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Let's have a look at the Greek word that is used for righteousness here so that we can see whether this is accurate. In the interlinear, um, 
here we go. Let me find it. This word righteousness in the interlinear is here. Um, one, three, four, three in Strong's and um, it says righteousness, justice. Um, righteousness of which God is the source or author, a divine righteousness. Judicial approval, the approval of God. Okay, so as we scroll down to the further meanings, you can look at this yourself. Obviously, you can go online and find this very easily in Strong's. Okay, so there's a, a sense in which in the Old Testament, because people were under the law, they were uh, doing works. But in it says here in the writings of Paul, this has a particular meaning um, and it refers to... Um, our justification before God. So now I'm going to show you this image of the great exchange. This is what Christians believe about righteousness. We believe in the scriptures at 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says that God made him to be sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And Jesus, when he was dying, he took the sin of the world upon himself, your sin, my sin, past, present and future, and he paid the price for us. Isaiah chapter 53 describes this and 1 Peter 2.24 also and many other places in scripture. So um, as a result, we receive as a free gift the righteousness of God as a free gift. This means that we don't become righteous by our own works. The scriptures are very, very clear on this matter. They tell us that um, it's not by our uh, works, as we've just seen in, in Romans chapter 4 and in many other places. We are declared righteous uh, because of Jesus. We become the righteousness of God because of Jesus and it's only because of Jesus do we uh, are we seen in this manner by God now does this mean that we go around sinning as much as we want no okay Romans chapter 6 explains that in Romans chapter 6 he says does this mean that we continue sinning as much as we want and the scripture actually says no um I'll show you that um what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. So coming back to the Watchtower article, why, why are Jehovah's Witnesses being told that we earn our own righteousness by our own works? Why? Um, let's have a look at chapter, uh, paragraph six, because in paragraph six, something really shocking is said, which I, <laughs> I just straight away recognised as being totally unscriptural. Um, it says uh, we are influenced by our imperfection and sin. Yes, we are. Yes, I agree with that. However, because we are made in God's image, we are able to live by his standards of righteousness. If you're a Christian, can you even believe that it says that? Because we are made in God's image, we are able to live by his standards of righteousness. That is completely contradicted by the scripture. Genesis 1.27 merely says that we were created in God's image, male and female. I'm not denying that we were created in God's image. What I'm denying is that we're able to live by his standards of righteousness. In the scriptures, we see very clearly that human beings are not able to live by the standards of righteousness of God. The Mosaic law proved that 100%. And since the Mosaic law being under Christ, we still can't live up to God's standards of righteousness. We are sinful. We sin every single day in multiple ways. In so many ways, it's hard to count. In ways where we should have done something and we merely didn't do something that we should have done. Maybe we should have shown some love to someone and we didn't. Maybe we should have helped someone and we didn't. All these things are sin. Okay, and they're falling short of God's standard. What kind of standard are Jehovah's Witnesses living to here? Because if they think they can, they can live 
by his standards of righteousness. Let's have a look at a couple of scriptures about that. When we look at verses about human sin, we see that sin is pervasive in all of humanity. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So why on earth are we seeing this statement being made in the Watchtower? We are able to live by God's standards of righteousness because we're made in God's image. Well, no, because this is why we need Jesus Christ. Um, if you look at it, even there, the, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, all of the scriptures are telling us that we are sinful and we cannot live up to God's standards. We can try our best, which we do try our best. The New Testament is full of advice and it's full of uh, telling us, you know, you must um, not do these things, you know, don't steal and don't be horrible to people and etc. But at the end of the day, as Romans 3 says, no one, none is righteous. I mean, that's a perfect verse there. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. Um, no one does God, not even one. Right. Jehovah's Witnesses think that they're not included there. But... Uh, we know that we are sinners as Christians. We know that that's what the scripture teaches. We try to not sin and thank the Lord through the Holy Spirit of God. We are helped not to sin. So uh, the Holy Spirit does transform us inwardly. And then we, um, we are empowered. We're empowered to live uh, in a way that's pleasing to God. So I will say that we are empowered to live in a way that's pleasing to God, but we will still sin and we will certainly still not live up to the standards of righteousness that God has. So this article saying that you can uh, be righteous because you're made in the image of God. It, and, and what's important here is that we look at how many times is Jesus mentioned and is Jesus given the uh, credit for our righteousness? Just like I showed you, um, we are given righteousness because of Jesus Christ. OK, but does this article tell us this? Look at how many times Jesus is mentioned. He's mentioned twice. The first time um, he is mentioned for criticising the religious leaders and the second time he's mentioned, he's mentioned in, in paragraph 18, in fact, Jesus commands stop judging. Right. So this entire article does not point to Jesus at all. It doesn't point to Jesus in any sense as being the way that we are declared righteous. So it's telling you that you will earn your own righteousness. OK, so strengthen your love of Jehovah's standards. I'll just quickly summarise this part. Um, we would imagine that this part, you know, what have you got to do? Step one, step two. Right. But we find that it's all about what we do. It's all about the Old Testament, Adam and Eve. Um, we need to grow in love, uh, blah, blah. It's just awful, to be honest. It's really awful. Abraham. How can we imitate Abraham? Oh, something just fell over in my house. Um, How can we imitate Abraham? Like him, we need to keep learning about Jehovah. This paragraph here is as though Jesus never existed. In fact, the whole thing is as though Jesus never existed. Yeah, he's given a token mention. But as usual, it's like he never existed for Jehovah's Witnesses. So it says you have to put lots of effort in. And um, this paragraph quotes 
the Old Testament again, just as though Jesus never existed, um, saying pursue righteousness. Now, I'm obviously not saying that as Christians we should, you know, not try. Oh, let's just not bother. Let's just sin and never bother. We should pursue righteousness, but these verses were written before Christ and after Christ, we hear that our righteousness comes through Christ Jesus, through faith, as a gift. And it's just shocking, to be honest, the way that this article um, suggests that people must earn their righteousness. Uh, this is just a way of having people obey the uh, governing body and be trying very hard to earn their salvation. And even though uh, I think on Watchtower frequently asked questions, they say that they don't believe that we can earn our salvation. Everything points to the fact that they do believe that. Um, everything here, no, nothing is said about turning to Christ. Nothing is said about fixing your eyes upon Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, OK, don't look down on others. Well, they do look down on disfellowshipped people, don't they? And that's a whole other topic. I do have videos which discuss that. Um, so all of this does not lead people to Jesus Christ. And I wanted to highlight this to you and uh, help to point out the serious flaws that are going on here. So to summarise, they're asking, what is righteousness? Well, in the Hebrew Bible, righteousness was recognised by someone obeying the commands of Jehovah God. And um, in the New Testament, in the Greek scriptures, Jesus Christ paid the price entirely, took our sin upon himself and gave us his righteousness as a free gift. Uh, righteousness is being declared uh, acquitted uh, and declared righteous and justified before God because of Jesus Christ. That's the answer. But what Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be saying is righteousness is obeying God's commands uh, and trying our best to, to do everything he says. So, yes, we can benefit from applying the standards. Um, and how can we strengthen our love for righteousness well we can strengthen our love by understanding that it's through jesus christ um this watchtower really doesn't just proves actually that the jehovah's witnesses are not teaching the christian message all they care about is people doing work work and more work for the organization um bringing in new members and recruits and obeying the governing body of jehovah's witnesses Please subscribe to this channel, please share this video, please stay tuned for more. I'm back. Lots of love and God bless.